if you brought your Bible or if you see one in the seat in front of you, uh, we had opened it to Mark, fourth chapter, and the 26th to the 34th verse. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once go to his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or with what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. And yet when it is sown in the ground and up comes the biggest of all the shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air may make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. So as we read the scripture, and as I, I read this several times, I actually had one woman jokingly asked me if I was allowed to read my Bible at annual conference as I was sitting there and reading the scripture for this week. And sometimes it seems like, you know, we're, we're all about business up there and, and, and not about what's in the Bible. But as I, as I looked at the scripture, I said, well, you know, it's, it's a lot like the one we read last week. It's written by the same guy, so it's not terribly surprising. And he, he kind of sandwiches two parables uh, in that uh, that literary sandwich in between, you know, the the, the crowd uh, and and then the disciples, um, and then those two parables, uh, related parables. So I listen again to the second parable, um, uh, beginning with verse thirty. Jesus also said, "With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown," It grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. So this second parable draws on the first. And then just in case we haven't figured it out, Mark explains what Jesus is doing. You know, the people who heard this parable would have been familiar you know, with the metaphor of the mustard seed representing the smallest possible thing. A mustard plant grows quickly, and when grown, produces seeds that attracts many birds. The trees and the birds were often used to represent empire and nations in, uh, in other parts of the Bible. And so in Ezekiel 22, we read, Thus says the Lord God, I will also take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and set it out. I will pluck from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the high mountain of Israel, I will plant it, that it may bring forth boughs and bear fruit and become a stately cedar. And birds of every nation, of every kind, will nest under it. They will nest in the shade of its branches. And later in Ezekiel, we say, we hear, <clears throat> Behold, Assyria was a cedar in Lebanon, with beautiful branches and forest shade and very high, and its top was among the clouds. The waters made it grow, the deep made it high. With its rivers, it continually extended all around its planting place and sent out its channels to all the trees of the field. Therefore, its height was loftier than all the trees of the fields. And its boughs became many and its branches long because of many waters as it spread them out. All the birds of the heavens nested in its boughs. And under its branches, all the beasts of the field gave birth. And all the great nations lived under its shade. And finally, in Daniel, we read... <coughs> Now these were the visions in my mind as I lay on my bed. I was looking, and behold, there was a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew large and became strong, and its height reached to the sky, and it was visible to the end of the whole earth. Its foliage was beautiful, and its fruit abundant, and it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches, and all living creatures fed themselves from it. <laughs> so for the people who are listening to Jesus, the meaning of his words would have been well understood. The mustard tree that grew from the smallest possible seed was a great empire. The birds were the nations that formed that empire, and from that small beginning, the empire grew and spread. 
One person, one small effort, like the smallest seed, can grow to make a big difference. The mustard seed, that smallest of things, can grow into food and shelter for many birds and small animals, or shade for travelers. So I want you to watch what happens when I put a drop of dye into this large container of water. We see a transformation take place, not immediately, okay, right, but a single drop of water, single drop of dye, starts to disperse, starts to make a change, starts to transform this pitcher of water, stir it up a little, agitate a little. And one small drop takes that pitcher of water and turns it blue. From the smallest of beginnings, we see a visible and significant change. The United Methodist Book of Discipline states that the mission of the church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That is a pretty significant, challenging, and daunting mission statement. It's really tough sometimes to get started on something that's that, uh, uh, that much of a challenge. There are large-scale efforts from well-known evangelists that seek to do just that. But that's not enough. When we pay our apportionments, and we'll talk about that at some time later about catching up, we support bishops and staff in all kinds of efforts to do just that. But that's not enough. If we truly believe, as the song we'll sing later says, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together, then we need to do what we can as we are called by God. However small that effort might seem, because from those small efforts comes significant change. Within these walls, I've heard people mourn those who, who used to worship here and have left to go elsewhere. We talk about many people, we, how many people we used to have as members. We focus on the people who are not here, when we should be focusing on those that are. We need to consider how to equip and nurture and grow those that are here so that they can go out into the community and help the weed to grow. Joyful weeds. Eh, not all weeds are joyful, but this one is. When the reign of God is spreading like a weed in our community, then we are fulfilling our mission as United Methodists. Several years ago, when someone would ask me what Ramona UMC needed most, my answer was always, butts in the seats. But I have come to see that I was wrong. What we really need is more disciples. What we really need are more people who are willing to do their small part. This year, we had about 12 people walking in the crop walk, expressing their desire to end world hunger. Not everyone walked the entire distance, but they walked as they were able. We need more walkers next year. We have a visiting team who are spreading the love of Christ to those who need a visit for whatever reason. Some of us are going out with Bible or hymnal in hand to preach and pray and celebrate communion with those that can't get here on Sunday morning. Some of us are just visiting offering a friendly smile or a kind word, and letting people know that someone cares about them. Not everyone has the same gifts and calling for these visits, and you will not be asked to do something you're not capable of. We may want to stretch you a little, but you won't be asked to do something you're not capable of doing. Last week at lunch, we added a member to our visiting team. Lila Jenkins spoke up and said, well, I'd be willing to visit people in the hospital, but my vision prevents me from driving there. Sitting across from Lila, Mary Williams said, well, I'm not very good at hospital visits, but I can drive you there. Right. Um, and thus we have, yeah. So we can, do, we can do these things. Two mustard seeds beginning to grow together. One of the speakers at annual conference challenged the assembly with this question. If your church closed today, who would miss it other than the people in the pews? So certainly our friends and family who can't get here on Sunday morning would miss us. And others. And so as I considered this question and then started to make the list in my mind and eventually put it on paper, um, I thought about, well, the people in communities that still remember our yard sales. Maybe it's time to find the time and energy to have another one. There are those people who come here on a Saturday morning to pick up the Golden Share food orders. Perhaps we need to find a way to let more people know about this program so that we serve more of our community. The Cub Scouts would miss us. Although we haven't done much with them recently, um, we have reached out to them, and they have reached out to us. I have asked Ken Gamble to be our liaison to them as we look for ways to support them in our role as their sponsoring organization. 
One of those ways is I invited them to participate in our summer picnics so that we can begin to learn about each other. The community theater would miss us. As we talked after the last play, Amy Krause told me she had been so afraid of doing something that would displease us so that we wouldn't invite them back. <laughs> they loved putting on their play here and definitely want to do it again. And I definitely want them to be back here uh, doing that. I don't mind preaching in front of a, uh, a, a backstage backdrop one Sunday. And uh, uh, so I hope Pastor Val doesn't either. <laughs> <laughs> And certainly some 80 or 90 families whose children are in our care each day would miss us. I don't know, there, there's probably others. Mm -hmm. Verse 31 says, The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. And certainly the most significant point of that sentence is not the size of the seed, but the fact that it is sown. The mustard seed is not sown here in the sanctuary. <laughs> And the mustard weed doesn't grow here in the sanctuary. It grows out there in the community. Talking with Barbara uh, on Thursday, it grows on her property more than she'd like it to. <laughs> from such small beginnings, from the efforts of just one person, the reign of God grows in the community and draws people into our sanctuary to be nurtured and empowered by the Holy Spirit, then sent back out to help that reign of God continue to grow. Our seeds have been sown. The kingdom of God has started to grow. Now is the time to expand what we're doing and look for new ways to expand what it means to be a Methodist in Ramona. So if anything that I have said today makes you think that I don't value Sunday morning worship, then please let me correct that misunderstanding right now. There is tremendous value in coming together to read the word, to hear the word, to sing the word, to pray, and to celebrate our relationship with Jesus Christ. The fellowship of believers all praising God together is a powerful thing indeed. And the more people that are here on Sunday, the more that we can do throughout the rest of the week. But I would remind you that the times we read about Jesus being in church, he was either one, a missing child. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey. And then they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances. And when they didn't find him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. The other times he was in the temple, he was there to challenge the religious practices of the day. To do his ministry, he went out to the hillside and the seashore, and into the towns. Let's follow him. Let's love God and love our neighbors as he commanded us. Amen.